two, one. Bring up Josh's mic. Welcome to Crescendo, which occasionally takes a bird's eye view of modern culture. My guest today on Crescendo, John David Ebert, was a former editor at the Joseph Campbell Foundation. As such, he's certainly oriented toward the concept of cultural myths. Indeed, the subtitle of his latest book is Film as the Mythology of Electronic Society. The title of the book, by the way, is Celluloid Heroes and Mechanical Dragons, and as John will point out, the film industry, beyond being just a source of popular entertainment, knowingly or otherwise, progressively encapsulates or restates the myths under which modern culture operates. John is also the author of Twilight of the Clockwork God. He's unbelievably erudite, but as a personal favor to me, John has promised to keep it simple so I might follow his thoughts. John David Ebert, welcome to Crescendo. Thanks for having me. Glad you're here. Yeah. The introduction to the book under discussion today, Celluloid Heroes and Mechanical Dragons, you write, the, this book is an attempt to answer the question, what are the new myths? Yes, and that, that was the central question uh, that preoccupied my thinking from the beginning was uh, all civilizations have myths. They don't really just disappear. They break down and fall apart in certain phases, but when they break down and fall apart, as they did, say, in the ancient Hellenistic world, uh, they go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And in the ancient Hellenistic world, they turned up in the Hellenistic popular culture of uh, basically the novel was invented out of that. Uh, disintegration of that society and you start finding mythic themes turning up in the Greek invention of the novel something like uh, Apuleius's The Golden Ass. So I, I wondered uh, if a similar process might not be happening in our society right now and I thought well the, the major prevailing myths of the, the Christian edifice has completely disintegrated and also the Greek and Roman myths that were the secondary aspect of our uh, civilization have, are also basically gone where have they gone? And the first thing I turned to was our film uh, industry because um, having grown up in the suburbs of Phoenix, uh, going to see the movies was one of the things that I just did, you know, it was like every weekend. There Not wasn't much anything, else to do. Yeah, there wasn't anything else to do. <laughs> and um, so I had these films, that, you know, that sort of imprinted on me from a very young age and uh, I was just, just about, you know, 10 years old when I saw, you know, things started coming out like Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind and Spielberg and Lucas were just getting warmed up and uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Apocalypse Now. Those films really hit me in a big way. And later on when I went into college and started finding out about mythology, I started realizing that in fact these directors had been articulating a brand new version of these ancient myths and adapting them in such a way uh, that you don't even realize you're, you're looking at a mythology. You just sit in the theater and you think it's popcorn entertainment, but in fact um, it's continuing the Western tradition and developing its themes. You mentioned, you mentioned about the disintegration of myths, the Hellenistic myths and also Judeo-Christian myths. What were those myths, are they, and, and what have they been replaced by? What are the myths of modern society? Um, the ancient myths were, of course, the Greek and Roman myths, you know, the, the great gods and the mythic tales that you find in Ovid's Metamorphoses and recounted by Bullfinch and the late, you know, Edith Hamilton. That, that's all the basic body of uh, Greek and Roman mythology. And as Joseph Campbell used to say, myths are other people's religion. And, uh, you know, we think of those stories as just quaint stories, but they were actually the, the religious soul of that civilization. They took those stories very, very seriously. Uh, up to a certain point, and then at about the time of the rise of the Roman Empire, a little bit before that, they sort of laughed at them, but they'd probably been laughing at them uh, for about, you know, a century prior to that. But by the time you get to Ovid's, uh, <clears throat> Ovid's Metamorphoses, uh, he's just telling these things as, as fanciful tales that people used to believe in, and he's just a compiler recording them. And uh, that's when you know the myths are no longer working. If you're laughing at them, or if they're ridiculed, uh, if they're not taken seriously, they've broken down. They're no longer working. There's, there's a sort of deep profundity that goes along with spiritual and mythological forms when they're working in a, in a, in a valid uh, operating, you know, vital tradition. And um, today's myths are turning up in popular culture. Uh, they were turning up in the novel earlier in the 20th century in the works of uh, writers like Thomas Mann and Marcel Proust and James Joyce. And then for some reason, um, after that generation, those, uh, a mythic consciousness, an awareness of mythic forms disappeared from the cultural mainstream. And it went in other directions. Uh, but meanwhile, popular culture started going uh, in a big way in the 50s and 60s. And then right about as you come to the late 60s, and I mark it with this particular film, Stanley Kubrick's uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey in 1968, which starts this whole myth movement in Hollywood. He's the first director 
to learn about mythology and consciously create, to attempt to create, with, along with his uh, co-creator Arthur C. Clarke, uh, a valid mythology for the contemporary world. Hmm. You write in your book, to Americans, everything is an automobile engine. Is that one of our myths? I'm trying to understand what you well, mean Well, yes, by it's, it's linked in with the, the myth of the machine and Americans as tinkerers and who came over here. And the, the main thing they were interested in is uh, making a buck and learning how to tame and conquer the environment. It's an extension of the biblical mythology of the conquest of the land. You move into a, a geographical landscape and you take it over, co colonize it, and then you transform the features of the local landscape into whatever the tradition is that the people who move into that landscape bring with them. Uh, you might, you know, uh, the, the Spaniards come in and they bring Christianity with them and they start naming places after, you know, Christian icons and so forth, something like that. And um, so um, that, you know, that's what happens with, with that. The films that you talk about in your book uh, all have to do with technology in some way. So is, is that because that's what we're grappling with, losing right, our soul? Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the way Americans regard everything as an automobile is somewhat analogous to the Romans. The, the, the contrast between the Romans and the Greeks is very similar to the contrast between Americans and Europeans. And that is to say that there was, in the early phases of the culture, there was a vital living tradition in which myths were taken seriously and the machine was really a secondary development. Um, in the later phases of the society, technological and ep economic concerns in, in both the case of Rome and America became the, the primary concerns of the society and the cultural aspects sort of fell off out of the mainstream, which is why popular culture then starts uh, sprouting up all over the place in these late phases. And Americans have a very pragmatic mentality like the Romans did. They were a society of you know, merchants and engineers and military men. And um, that's pretty much, you could, you could say the same thing about Americans. That's, mm -hmm. that's our, our forte, our approach to the world, is mm -hmm. through understanding it in terms of, of a machine. But is that the myth under which we're operating? Or, or, or is it that God is an old man in the sky with a beard? Well, what it is, is it goes back to, it's a, it's a transformation of the Christian mythology that took place at the hands of uh, these Gothic monks from the 12th century who were fascinated with all these properties of matter and light and energy and they, you know, they were creating the first lenses and they thought of the machine, their dream, their sort of myth was this idea of uh, the cosmos as a perpetual motion machine. Um, and the myth of perpetual motion was the, the ultimate aim and the ideal to be attained. That God had created the cosmos as a machine, set it in motion, and it just ran perpetually without needing any extra influx of energy. So that became the mythic ideal for these generations of tinkerers who came in to start creating their own machines as approximations of this metaphysical or mythological idea of God as a clockmaker, a, a clockwork designer. And so that mechanical transformation of, of the ancient uh, biblical vision of God as a maker um, was the, the transformation of the European mindset that the Americans have inherited. So the metaphysics have dropped out and, we've, and we're just left with the machine, but it, it started as, in fact, all technologies do begin with metaphysics. They begin with symbolic uh, thinking. And uh, the symbolic thinking over time gets forgotten and uh, then you're left with just a, a tool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You. Uh you write in your book that the myth movement in Hollywood, which you've already alluded, alluded to, has so revolutionized the industry that I can only compare it to, and then you cite an episode in the High Renaissance. Help us understand better what you mean by the myth movement in Hollywood. Right. The myth movement in Hollywood begins in 1968 with Stanley Kubrick's uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. And then there's a lapse there. And then um, with George Lucas in 1977, Star Wars gets going, and Steven Spielberg with Jaws in 1975. These guys were all thinking consciously about myth. Jaws and was a, was a, a myth-based movie. Yes, mm. it's, it's a, a, an adaptation of the ancient dragon slayer myth. It's a retelling mm. of the story of Siegfried slaying the dragon and um, that kind of thing. The solar hero who, who defeats the, the monster, uh, overthrows it, and, and saves civilization. 